Was that me? Victoria Vion? Answering questions not on the right time for the Q&A? Never! Never! I would never imagine myself doing that! Welcome to the November Q&A! These are questions from November answered close to November! Wah! But the best timing about this video is that I can answer questions about Thanksgiving late and Christmas early, so I can answer a question like this one right now! Cookie Gary asks, since it will be almost Christmas when this is answered, what is your favorite Crimbless song? Ah, well you see, it happens to be the one and only All I Want For Christmas Is You, which is why that parody exists. Cause I couldn't help myself cause it's so fun. I'm one of those people that'll blast it in my car, like, in November. In fact, I did blast it in my car in November. And I'll do it again! I won't do it on the streams, I promise! But I will do it in my car! <laughs> Fizzle says, No, no, no breaking the fourth wall! Get back in your cartoon! Okay! Okay! Okay, I'm, I'm going back! And to answer your other question, mayhaps I'll stream a hat in time. I don't have priorities on streaming it anytime soon, but I know it is a good game, and I know some of my friends love it a lot, so I definitely have it on my list of games that I'd like to stream eventually. I know it's not too long of a game, so I feel like it did fit really well with like my style of streaming and everything like that. So I'll say yes, eventually. Stardew says, do you think there are enough aerospray mains to start a secret aerospray society? P.S. Don't tell anybody because it's a secret. Uh, well, um, the, the question is already in the Q&A, so I can't really go back on that one. But I will say, yes, I feel like there are a lot of people out there that do like the aerospray, but they don't want to speak up, you know? Because if they do, then people will know that they like the aerospray. So I think that's the secret aerospray society in and of itself. You just gotta find the people. Davis asks some more Thanksgiving-y questions, saying, Favorite type of pie? Like, have you ever had, like, a warm apple pie? Maybe with, like, a little bit of, like, the crumble on it? You put a little bit of whipped cream on top? Aw. Oh. Best pie. You can't beat that. Like, pumpkin pie is delicious. But you can't find pumpkin pie that's good reliably all year long in a lot of places. But apple pie is, like, always around. Y you can't go wrong. It I feel like it's really hard to mess up an apple pie. They're all delicious. Give me more apple pie. Great Gamer says, What do you hate the most about the Nintendo Switch? And the first time that I read this question, I laughed really hard because I wasn't, like, expecting this question. But I think the greatest issue the Switch has is when your account is on two Switches, unless that Switch is your primary console, you can't, like, access certain things. We had this issue when uh, my sister and I both got Switches of our own that her account was still tied to my Switch, so she couldn't access any games from her Switch in offline mode, which was ridiculous. And we didn't figure out that this was a problem and how to fix it for about, like, eight months. So, uh, it would have been really nice if that was easily explained somewhere, and I'm sure it was, and we probably just missed it, but <laughs> it definitely was a little bit of a damper on that experience for a while. Booyah says, have you ever cosplayed? There are the pictures. I put them on the screen. They're right there. Oh, look at those. Booyabak also asks, are you artistic? Uh, I like to draw, but I don't put a lot of effort into drawing things in the sense that, like, I'm not really, like, trying to become a better artist actively. But if I have to, I can draw enough that people know what I'm trying to show. I don't really have a finished piece, but I do have, like, a favorite little pencil drawing that I have from a long time ago that I'm chucking on the screen right now. Look at you, you get more pictures. Ooh. And I am definitely more of a morning person than a night owl. If I ever try to stay up like super late on a stream, if we ever go to like 1 like a.m. or something in the future, I will probably reach some level of incoherency that'll make me have to stop streaming. <laughs> Optimistic says, can you do a 20 minute video with just your cats? I love cats. Well, I did make a video with my cats in it, but I can also give you this. <laughs> Hi! Come on, up here! No. Oh, Glass Paragon says, oh! Oh, 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 you were just, oh, you just wanted to scare me? Oh, it might have, oh, it might have worked. Thanks, thanks, Glass! <laughs> Quantic asks, do you have OCs? Splatoon or not? What can you tell us about them? 
Uh, within Splatoon, I wanted to actually have my Inkling have, like, more of a thorough backstory. And I was originally, like, trying to set that up when I started doing the ad stuff and I started, like, working in coats with Sheldon. But I didn't know really where to take it. I've talked to people about this before. And my Inkling was actually supposed to have, like, a name. Like, her name was supposed to be Slushy because she was a sloshing machine main. And that was in my brain, like, yeah, this is perfect. You got the wordplay going on. You can give her a personality, make her work at Ammo Nights. And then it and then it never really developed beyond that. But I would really like to imagine that, like, my Inkling OC is, like, an alternative version of myself. Like, not exactly like myself, but, like, definitely has, like, at least a few of my own personality traits. So it's probably a, a slightly a self-insert. I think being an Inkling, she probably wouldn't actually be good at math like I am, though. That would definitely be one of the main things that's different. <laughs> Dree asks, what is one dream that you'll never forget? LOL, see what I did there. I see. I like the pun. So I kind of half forgot this dream, but I found it in a text chat. That's why I like, haven't lost it. So I'm going to try and put it together for you the best that I can. I used to have a lot of like semi-lucid dreams where I feel like I would always be like, it was like watching a movie kind of, where I would like see myself doing stuff and be like kind of aware of the things that were going on. And like, I would want to control the dream, but I like, I wouldn't be able to, but I would have all the emotion and everything. Like I was living out the dream. And one time I was hanging out with my friends and uh the person that i remember was in this dream for sure was actually vasco but we were all hanging out and having a fun time like 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 having like a private battle and then like somebody like teleported into the room and it was kind of like in the style of one of those stupid like pop-ups you get where like you know they're like oh we're gonna put viruses in your computer and you have to pay money that's so you can get the viruses out of the computer and and I remember Vasco was like, oh god, not that guy again. And I was like, oh, that guy again? And I, I don't remember much of the dream beyond that, but I remember we were all, like, super worried about this hacker guy taking all of our data and our files. And then I woke up. And I and for like a good minute or two after I woke up, I was still genuinely concerned. I remember I got up and like like checked my laptop just to be like safe. <laughs> and then I sadly never had like a follow-up dream. So I never was able to find out like if it continued or not. Like I tried. I went back to sleep to try and like reinsert myself into that story to try and like fix the problem. But all I did was like fall asleep normally after that. And then I woke up and I was like, oh. Samboy asks, what's your favorite villain in Nintendo games? Honestly, it's probably just Bowser. I know that's like not like a very fancy villain, but I just kind of always liked Bowser. They've done such a good job at like characterizing him over the years. They gave him that cute little parental controls video of Bowser Jr. I just, I hope that Nintendo keeps trying to give Bowser a personality because there's more to him than just being big bad guy. I mean, he's also like a terrible person. But he's got, like, an interesting character that I really don't mind learning more about, if that makes sense. Brandimation asks Q&A, does Tippy give tips at restaurants? He does, but it's not the kind of tips you're expecting. You think he's gonna give money, but sadly, he is a cat. So instead, he gives just really sage advice and then walks away. It's pretty cool. Graz asks, what was my all-time favorite Splatfest? I think I've answered this one before, but it's the family versus friends Splatfest. Mostly because it was a simple time where I played a lot with that, my old team. And we pretty much just played the whole Splatfest together the whole time. And it was really good. I have a lot of really positive memories associated with it. Cap asks, what is your favorite jacket that you own? It's, it's this one. I, I've taken pictures with it before on purpose. It's oversized, but it's so good. Swaggo asks, question, what is your favorite block in Minecraft? Just regular old normal glass. I love to build stupid underwater domes that I almost never finish. I would love to someday like build something using like all the different colors of glass. I'm not even sure how you get that, but I I next time I play Minecraft, I'm gonna find out because I want to. <laughs>
Michael asks, what was the most difficult course you took in college? If I had to pick just one, it'd probably be my introduction to Java course that I took in my second semester of freshman year. Not because it was like the most difficult course that I ever took in my life, but because I went into it knowing so little that I almost failed by like halfway in the semester and I had to like double down on studying for like just this course to understand how coding worked and it was worth it because like I got an A minus in the end but it was definitely like a lot of effort to get that or if I had to pick another one, uh, during grad school, we had this, like, accelerated speed, like, hey, look, here's all of calculus and all of algebra in, like, <laughs> three months. And it was, it was definitely something, because if you forgot something, they weren't going to stop to re-explain it, you just had to learn it as you went. And I was really bad with linear algebra, because I only had, like, one course about it, like, really early on during my, like, time in undergrad. So, th that was also very bad. That one I did not survive as well, but I still passed, and that's all that matters. You know? C's get degrees. I got a B minus. Snowflake Legend asks, question, how did you first meet Sheldon? <clears throat> let me, let me get into my storytelling voice here. It was a dark and stormy night during 2015. I looked at my Wii U game, and I thought to myself, oh. Today would be a great day to play Splatoon. I looked at my gear. I still was only playing with a Splattershot Junior. I felt so weak, so alone. And I realized in that moment that I needed to take a chance. I needed to go shopping for the first time in my Splatoon existence. I walked up to the store and I saw a horseshoe crab in the shop. And I realized the glory that was different weapons. Every weapon so unique. So many different combinations of subs and specials. And I knew in that moment that I wanted to know everything that there was about weapons. So I filled out an application. And I became Sheldon's right hand squid. And I have been happy ever since. That Shell Asian asks, What do you think about the current status of Pokemon? Post the Crown Tundra, I don't think Pokemon is doing as bad. Pokemon Sword and Shield, the storyline was really interesting. It's just that it like felt like it was really rushed to like get to that conclusion point. I really would have loved like more antagonists or like more build up towards what was actually gonna like happen in the story. But the Crown Tundra portion of the game at least feels like an older school Pokemon game, it feels like every single thing has a purpose. And one of the big things about Pokemon games these days is they feel so open, but there's not always like a lot to interact with in those open spaces. If that gets fixed in future games, I feel like future games will be really good. Otherwise though, I really like the design of the new Pokemon, and I want to have faith that things can turn around. I really want to know what's going to happen next year with the anniversary, that's got me. That's got me real ready. I'd love to like record a reaction if they put a big video out or something, like a direct. I don't know if they will, but stay tuned. Fries asks, are you happy with your green screen? And I'll say yes. I recorded this little section for the tiny controller video that never came out, so I'll just, I'm just gonna put it right here, cause it's great. Ah, what a beautiful day to make bad choices when I play Splatoon 2 for the Nintendo Switch. Like, do you see this pro controller here? I don't think I'll be eating this today. <laughs> Zoemi asks, Q&A question, if you could be a Splatoon agent, including 1 and 2, which one would you like to be? I think I'd want to be Agent 4. I just find, like, people's, like, Recharacterizations of Agent 4 to be really good. I like looking at people's Agent 4 OCs. I wanted to make an Agent 4 OC of my own one time. It never really came into being, but maybe someday. I had like a song, like half written for my own Agent 4 that I was gonna put together to like make storyline for her. Maybe someday it'll still happen, because I really still want to write that musical number. Liam says, A question. Is one of your cats more annoying than the other? Which, and then the question pretty much just devolves into, Show me your cats. And I will say, Tippy is without fail the most annoying of our cats. 
He will do anything for attention. He's the most likely to steal food. He breaks my stuff. And he also steals uh, places like chairs. Like in this little video right here that I took last night. I want to get a picture of this cat. Turn the light. Turn the light. Ah, uh, that's what he does. He steals the chair right away, huh? You a chair thief? I don't know. Look at this way. You gotta admit to your crimes. Look, he's even got his paw like on the blanket. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Hi, baby. <laughs> She's so tired from taking your chair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gina says, question, if you didn't start a YouTube channel, what would you be doing right now? So if I didn't start this YouTube channel, I think I would definitely be working in New York City, or at least a lot closer to the city. I started this YouTube channel right up before I started going to graduate school, and then I didn't actually start really making like content that I liked until I was already in graduate school. I got my master's degree last year in like May. So that's May 2019 in case people are watching this video in 2021 because oh my god it is gonna be 2021 in less than a month from when I'm recording this. Uh, so after I got that degree I used it to get a job but I kept it here on the island so I could keep making content. I feel like I probably would have ended up in the city otherwise because like there are a lot of job opportunities out there, but I'm okay with not being in the city because like the commute would be really long and because my commute is shorter, I'm able to do things like this. I'm very happy living my double life of doing job stuff and then doing YouTube stuff. I think I'm really just glad I'm able to do this all the time. Autumn says, question, if a ye haws, but haws ye, how will haw ye yees haw? It took me multiple times to read this question and I still don't have an answer for you so I will say that Haw is gonna be very 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 inspirational they're gonna make a big old speech and that's how they're gonna convince those yees to finally haw. Isn't that just amazing? I bet it would make a great movie. Justin Thorne says, what happens if a person on the opposite Splatfest team watches one of your this team only videos? You see, when people do that, they leave comments on the video saying like, ha ha, I'm on the other team and I'm watching the video. And everyone benefits from that. You get to be a funny sneaky guy and I get extra comments on my video. <laughs> Agent Octo asks, Q&A question, what would you rather do, travel through time or stop time? I feel like no matter which one of these you pick, you're still getting older, I'm assuming, while you're doing these things. So I feel like I would rather be able to like travel through time than stop time. Because if you like stop time and then you start it up again, I'm assuming that you've gotten older while well, everyone else has stayed the same. And if you keep doing that like over and over and over again throughout your lifetime, there's gonna be a point where you're like accidentally like a year older than your friends or something. And that seems really weird. I don't, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> Shy Boy says, turkey or ham? Ham all the way. Every year we buy too big of a ham and then it sits in our fridge for two weeks. But here we are. I can tell you that right now I have a little too much ham in the fridge. Red Spy says, when Splatoon stops updating weapons and stuff, then will you bring back the Victionaries? Maybe? I would really like to do like a video series on like all of the modes. I feel like that's pretty simple and fun to do. And I would like to do that. That seems accomplishable. And Red Spy says, what game are you streaming on December 15th? Which I'm assuming is your birthday. Well, it is a Tuesday. So it'll probably be a more random game. Maybe like Genshin. Maybe like an indie game. Who knows? We'll find out. Because I don't know yet. I usually plan out my streams the week of. <laughs> or even sometimes the day of. Ethan says, what do you think is a bigger pain, wet socks or wet sleeves? I'm gonna say wet socks, because if you get your sleeves wet during the day, you can probably find a way to dry them off. You can get some like paper towels or napkins or, you know, like, you know, just shake them around a little bit. But if you're in the middle of the day and you got wet socks, what are you gonna do, take them off? And then you're not wearing socks anymore? And now your feet are uncomfortable in your shoes? Agent Ruby asks, Q and A question, why, why did you make this a series? Well, 
I honestly just liked doing Q&As, and I was like, well, if I just do one every month or so, then everyone will get to answer questions, because people always ask, hey Vic, when are you gonna do a Q&A? And now I've just kind of made it like, a standard on the channel, I'll do them pretty often. It's also a really good excuse for me to take lots of videos of my cats, or my dog, like this one. <laughs> Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of Q&As, this Q&A has come to a close. <gasps> you never would have guessed that would happen, right? If you'd like to participate in the actual December Q&A, just like this is the actual November Q&A, <laughs> leave a question below. I usually get to around 25 or 40 questions per video, so get those fingers flying and I'll pick the ones that I feel like I can answer the best. The next Q&A will get to ring in the new year-ish. It'll come out ideally on December 30th, since that's the last Wednesday slash Thursday of the year. I'll go back and actually add 2020 to all the Q&A thumbnails at some point. <laughs> Thank you for your patience, drink more water, and stay safe. Cause the content I'm looking to create will sure keep making you happy. Here's to a great December, or whenever you're watching this video. Yay! Bye bye <laughs> Thank you.